Did you know that as humans, we have this innate ability to be able to use media to understand and contextualize the world that we live in? But LLMs don't have that same skill, which is really kind of fascinating when you use an LLM for a research piece on the media, which is what I've done this week. So that's what we're going to be covering in this week's Data Radio Show. Hello there. In this week's Data Radio Show, I'm going to be sitting down and having a chat to James Hartwright from Pragmaticians around media and LLMs. It's not necessarily around data architecture like you'd normally find on the show, but it is a really fascinating way to look into what makes us human and how we interact with something like media, which is a really human way of communicating. Media gives us tools and context that we can use to understand the world around us, but we use that understanding to program LLMs. So how much can they understand? So it's a bit of a broad topic, but it's a really fascinating conversation, especially if you're kind of curious into what the future of media is going to look like in a world where LLMs and AI models out there are doing a lot more work for people in terms of inspiring us or educating us or informing us. But before we get into that interview, make sure that you hit that like button, share, subscribe, tell everybody about this episode. Until then, let's jump over, catch up with James. Hello there, welcome to another episode of the Data Radio Show. This one is a little bit different. We're not going to be focusing on things like data architecture, but we are going to be looking into AI on a really specific topic, looking around media analysis. Joining me this week, I've got James Hartwright from Pragmaticians. How are you going, James? Good, good, thank you. Fantastic. I'm really excited that you get a chance to join me for this one because this is this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, a bit of context for the viewers out there. When I'm not doing this, I create content around media analysis and what's going on, particularly in the media in this country with our politicians. I've got a following of, last time I checked, it was about 30,000 people. So it's, this might be a big crossover episode with them. But I did a bit of a research project a few weeks ago around how much our politicians end up in the media and whether or not it's a bit of a bias in happening there or whether or not we're seeing some politicians get more media mention than maybe they should based on the representative layout of our parliament. Um, it was really fascinating because I used AI to help me build that analysis framework and it came back really accurate. Like I was surprised at just how accurate AI got the, the quantitative stuff, or the qualitative stuff, sorry, the numbers, the, no, that is quantitative. Yeah. One of those days. Yep. Um, and I'm kind of quality curious, James. Yeah, quantity is numbers. Quality is qualitative. It's been a while since I got my degree. Um, I, I'm kind of curious, James, from your perspective, how how do you see AI helping with becoming this kind of tool to help people with analysis, with understanding things a bit better, with interpreting the world around them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, look, the... Um... Uh, the often quoted piece of 90% of content generated today is unstructured. I would go it's semi-structured in that it's come from somewhere. It's probably on a topic. But yeah, basically, there's lots of stuff out there that isn't straightaway stats or metrics related that um, those things that you said in terms of go off and query and look at volumes, um, that that's actually you asking a question, applying some criteria to probably textual data and then returning it. So yet yeah, the, the, that ability for natural language queries to be able to run against broad um, blocks of data, yeah, I, you know, way, way more powerful for um, a simple user um, <laughs> rather than the data scientist um, to go and pull that data out and um, build a contextual framework around it much, much uh, higher and easier than today than in a couple of three years ago. Now, I, I'm not young anymore. It was 20 odd years that I did my study ago. Um, I'm kind of curious whether or not you're seeing young people come through these days who are much more, as digital natives, much more able to use these to, to better prompt engineer to, to create better tools for them in that field. Uh, definitely, they've definitely got the capability to use the tools. Um, my my niece has just started a postgrad course in PR and media, so I'm I'm mm -hmm. hot on the topic at the moment. So aware digital <laughs> natives, um, she's 24, 25. So you know where where a true digital native is coming through, 
and um, is trying to apply that piece in how how media is broadcast and how she can utilize that media channel to to get her PR stuff over. So so I definitely agree that the tools and the capability that um, they are able to use is, has a progressed. And yeah, their their thought process is in being in naturally going and looking out in those areas to pull through. So I think thumbs up in terms of capability, but the piece absolutely that only us gray haired people uh, seem to be able to proper apply is, hey, does, you know, is the gut feel there? Does it, mm-hmm. you know, putting that critical thinking, putting the statistical uh, analysis over the top of the results you get back and applying that. Um, and especially with um, some of the some of the pieces that have been built that have an inherent bias in them. Yeah, I, I know I have a bias in my content because I'm terribly self-aware and it's a horrible, horrible thing to have to live with sometimes. Um, one of the things I was very specific to do with what with my piece, though, was an actual old fashioned analysis just to make sure that, that it matched. That's how I know that it, it was actually relatively accurate. Um, in terms of what we see with media bias and, and, and the way that media works around the world, is that something that that kind of research that goes into what people are doing, how content is presented, stuff like that? Do you think that's something that large language models are going to be able to refine better in the future, taking what people are watching, taking that information and helping us produce better content? Uh, I think there's definitely an initial piece where it can. Um, there, are, there's, um, there's a level of its ability to reach into the data. Um, so one of the things I said to my niece was, um, you'll have, you already have an account, you already have an ex Twitter account, and that gives you accessibility to draw data down. But that will already be driven by what X wants and thinks you like like w- watching, reading, and engaging with. So I said, set up two accounts and do one that is so daily left leaning. Um, mm-hmm. She is, and um, go in and use that as your normal account. Set up a completely opposite account and go and read the things. Go and look at the things that. You, you have an averseness to that you wouldn't go and normally read and utilize both of those because because it is there is a truth you can go and try and hook into the fire hose of of x but it's it you'll have to pay for it blah blah, blah. so there are limitations on your ability to do that but yeah go and go and draw through from as many different sources as you can the there's there's the thing around LLMs as they're constructed in a moment. So there, we know there's an inherent bias in the LLMs. They've been trained on the data that's been put out there in the last mm-hmm. 10 years. They're going to be increasingly um, biased because there's more being generated. There's AI stuff being generated. Uh, but on the converse, there are LLMs being built that are going, um, there's a curated set of content that, that they go in. So I'm, so it's not going to go off and look at Reddit, even though that might be really interesting. It's not going to go and look off at X. It's going to say, I'm going to take literature, um, Wikipedia that's generally curated and, you know, any sort of encyclopedic stuff that, you know, um, I hesitate to say it, but more towards truth, ratification of content and LN, mm-hmm. LNM is being built around there. So if we utilize those and utilize those to go off and pull, there's an increased likelihood that there's, an accuracy, an increased level of truth in there. But then you've got the other side, which is LLMs quite naturally are going to be created, created for commercial purposes by media organizations who have an alternate leaning, an alternate mm-hmm. product product view. They want to sell product. They want to get you inter- interacting with it more. So they will start creating LLMs that have an inherent bias in them and they will feed it with things that enforce reinforce the bias because they know that they can get more advertising money. They know they get more subscribers out of the back of it. So we're going to continue with this um, lots of competing pieces and therefore increased still a level of um, that um, critical thinking that we the humans need to apply when they're drawing that data out. Do humans have the ability to keep up with the critical thinking skills they need 
to, to work in, in a field where you've got these hip. <laughs> yeah, I think, look, similarly to you is I always go in and look at something. I'm very analytical, look at something and go, does that actually meet? But I, I have an inherent bias of 50 years of um, how I've been brought up and uh, where I am in my life and uh, financially that will obviously skew my my. So I don't think it's possible. But I think, as you said, just just going, taking it in, looking at it, considering trying to match it back to something else, asking another LLM whether the things that you've got in that LLM seem uh, uh, accurate or not. You know, all those sorts of things you can apply um, to to sort of get something where you feel comfortable with it, that if you're putting it together as a non-partisan item, that it is mm -hmm. as, as much as you can, yeah. In terms of LLMs, as I mentioned before, not great with the quality side of things, with being able to to identify bias. Is that something that audiences are aware of or that, or that program designers are aware of? But, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me do an example. I, I still scroll through Facebook in front of the telly, like, you know, um, dual device. Um, and I, and increasingly I'm getting popped up, um, amazing houses. Um, and it's, and it's an image of a beautiful kitchen or a cabin somewhere below. And I'm just going immediately seven legs on that chair, three legs on that chair. It's AI generated. And I'll, there'll be about a 1% of comments that go, guys, this is AI generated. I know it looks beautiful, but it's not real. And I just, so I, I don't, I think we're, it's not, it, we just have to be continually vigilant in that level of truth and that level of understanding. And uh, yeah, the more the more we feed AI with the more information, the cleverer it's going to get and the more we're going to have to be, you know, just vigilant in, in what we take from it. For a platform then like Meta, with you know, Facebook, Instagram, which yep. is not particularly fact-based, it, it, it's driven by emotion and and interactions with people and stuff like that and, and mm -hmm. it's been recognized as a place for disinformation and creating bubbles that people work within um does that make their meta ai something to be more concerned about if you're using it as a resource that there's there's le i look that there, there's a level of regulation that is starting to come in that i've seen to a greater or lesser extent um which is um which is still that the human piece. So that piece where I, where somebody's gone in and said, "Hey guys, it's AI generated." If Meta, in its um, uh, summarization of all of the comments that it's starting to pop up, can go, you know, at least one person has said this AI is AI generated. That's a that's a positive. And the mm -hmm. other the other piece is in somebody's posted something, and then somebody else has posted. Actually, here is a link to what's really going on. That's that's a step in the positive direction from my perspective, but I think uh, we've got we've got to get those media publishers in line to go. Well, if you've got AIs generating this, or you've got groups generating it, something that in the moderation part that is actually going. I'm sorry, this you know the the Snopes bit. I'm sorry, this has been <laughs> completely um, this is completely untruthful. Blah blah. blah. And that we're in the speed of AI, so it's not it gets generated and then twelve hours, twenty four hours less somebody puts in a oh actually this isn't true. It's got to be you know before a post gets released, it has an, an immediate check, and then within the next five minutes it has a more detailed check to to basically get to um, to stop the misinformation getting out or slow it down. Can AI work that fast? Oh, totally. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Look, the the um the it's going to be look. It's as with all things, there is going to be an inherent cost to it. But I think it, it, you know um uh something will go in, and it will probably be government led. Um, and there's greater or lesser extents to which we'd like government to go and interfere. But I think something that says they must um and having that set up is just starts to become as more misinformation gets out and and more people understand that an echo chamber isn't an amazing thing that it will just naturally 
the hu all the humans, the populace will go, this needs to be in place. Um, mm -hmm. The government will go, yes, we absolutely agree. And then there will be a level of enforcement in into media that that, that will occur. Um, yeah, good law. Good law comes from the populace agreeing. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. think I think we're getting there. Um, the the EU AI Act I think covers that a little bit. I, I can't say I've done a huge amount of digging into that yet. That's later. For, it's my project yeah. for later in the week. Um, okay. Yeah. And I understand Australia's just put in some its guidelines as opposed to some guidelines. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah do you it, feel they're going in the uh, right direction? The so. Uh, d definitely in terms of what the acts are doing. Um, mm -hmm. The first piece that they're doing, though, um, again, quite rightly, it's things like financial decisions. So yeah. um, you've given me all of this information. And if I've if I've used bias, you know, gender bias, racial bias, religious bias, anything in there to make this decision, we, we should all agree that's a bad thing. And so those AI policies are in there to go, make sure that the, there's no bias in there by publicizing the attributes that are used in this model. And then the secondary part of that is that if you disagree with the outcome of that, you can have a human come in and review that data and make a human-based decision, um, which will hopefully come out with something uh, better from your experience perspective. So yes, it's in, it's in that financial orientation. It hasn't hit misinformation, disinformation in media or anywhere else. It's the high impact, high negative bias parts that um, the AI policies are hitting today. Around the world as well, we're seeing, we have a whole bunch of public broadcasters. We've got a couple here. Um, there's the BBC. Is the ABC in Australia a public ABC broadcaster? Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, PBS in the United States. They're funded by government. They, the rules are different for each of them in, in the locations that they're in around how funding works, where they can take information from and stuff like that. Does that kind of challenge that they face as public broadcasters trying to do something for the public good create any kind of issues for a large language model that might not be able to identify a media bias or um, influence from a politician or you know, other kind of outside yeah. influence? Yeah, look, um, the, so in most, most um, countries, um, the uh, publicly funded, government funded, um, or it's always suggested there's a left-leaning bias. Yeah, the, which is really strange because like, I know with, with, with owls, and, and I can't say anything for the others, but I know with, with no. the New Zealand's one, um, our media has a right-leaning bias. It's not, a, not usually a huge right-lean. It, it's not you know, Fox News. But yeah. they tend to have more of a focus on the individual over the collective, and they tend to focus more yeah. on economic outcomes than they do over societal outcomes. Okay. So, so that gives you that, that right leaning bias. But mm. humans can't recognize that. No. And if humans can't no. recognize it, I wonder if LLMs can. Um, I, so the, the, the level of, so it, it, part of it's going to be down to the level of underlying initial set of information that that LLM is fed. So think of a young child. Um, so in that first three to five years, what the information you're feeding that child will, will in a lot of ways, build its inherent personality. So if, it, if you feed the, the new LLM with stuff that is across Reddit and X and maybe right-leaning um, stuff, that's its base personality. If you then add public broadcasting in on top of that, it will skew it a little but it's not an inherent personality so the the big piece there is is there a way in which the data that i'm putting in the sources that i'm using i can try and keep that equivalence try and get it as centric as as possible mm -hmm. um so if you only trained it on fox news if you only trained it on um abc or bbc you will pro you'll probably find alternate leanings so yeah building the llm with uh, with an acknowledgement for what it is that you're putting in and then testing it for bias. Testing as a human, if I, if I go and ask it a question and I feel that it's moving one way or the other to actually start looking and seeing where that information came from and retuning. As humans, we don't pick up bias particularly well if, if it's something that we agree with particularly Basically. if it's something that you agree with. Our confirmation yeah. bias kicks in really fast there. Um, 
would we do, do you think there'll be a problem there in the future with humans going well this has been trained on pbs and my bias is much more right leaning than this um so it's wrong so i don't trust what it has to say there, yeah definitely the you know the, there could be but i i think that will be so the um there will be llms that that are trying to be trained up on all of these sources um and i'm increasingly going hey llm tell me the source you use for that piece of information you provided back to me and in most cases it does give me a url in some cases it goes oh yeah sorry that's not real anymore so continually testing it poking at it but um as i said earlier i i also think that llms will be being created that will naturally have a bias um whether we that ai policy then starts to to go hey you're coming in and you're using an llm um that is that is inherently biased you will make that product choice you will make that choice to pick and use that um and it's you so um i did work for news corp for three years and so i knew there was an inherent bias in the product and I, the best way i could equate it in terms of the people that came in and read and consumed was it's like apple and android so mm -hmm. i'm an i'm an iphone user i will only ever use uh, iphones androids i just can't see myself getting to hold with it that's the product i picked and i'm going to stay there until something drastically change and i know there's many android people out there um that will do the same so there will be people that like enjoy consume pay for that product uh that is news corp or fox news or etc and there will other, be other people who will go i'm never going to touch a, a, a murdoch public publication um and i'm going to go over and use these pbs's or others that i'm feeling are guardian left centric um so I, so i also think that yeah those are going to be built up and they're going to be used and i and um as humans you are just going to go and start using them um the echo chamber gets greater etc cetera, etc cetera. but that is your choice you have mm -hmm. gone off to this publication because you know what it is you've gone off to use this product because you know how it's been constructed and it reinforces your choice part um lifting that up higher in terms of whether that's a good thing or a bad thing we as humans again just have to make our own decisions on what we do there is there a cultural element in there as well about how we as humans understand information that would be put out by an llm that's fed up on this media like we don't have murdoch media here in this country mm. so and we don't i don't think we've got anything quite so prolific as you know, fox news or anything like that in terms mm. of its bias but mm. you'll often see comments online or or you know feedback from from stuff that's coming from overseas from a new zealand perspective where it feels far more extreme than maybe somebody who's living within that environment mm. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of curious whether or not, you know, a cultural understanding of different media landscapes and the way that an LLM would interact with that or interpret it would have an impact ultimately in how in a place like us understands news that's coming out of Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, 100% that, you know, even, even today, um, what have most of the, what have most of the LLMs been trained on? It's stuff that's out there on the internet. So... Mm -hmm. So you look at New Zealand, the population of New Zealand against the population of Australia and what they generate against the population of the US and what yeah. they generate. Yeah. And you, you'll you'll have a definitive cultural skew towards the country that has been generating the most. Um, there's been there's been starters in taking non-English, structuring that, um, translating it. If we're using another LLM and then feeding that to try and get a more global perspective but there's still going to be cultural bias cultural skew in in any of those and there has to be um because of the volume of data you can't go let's make every country down to the four to five million of new zealand and that's mm -hmm. all we're going to allow in so there will always be a cultural bias but we see that in what we consume anyway the tv programs you watch aren't 100 percent new zealand generated mm -hmm. <laughs> heavily heavy us and a partial uk but it, and, and Australia, but you know, it's it's so it's not actually that far away from what we're getting bombarded with, presented with, anyway. Okay. Um, if we have LLMs out there that are being trained on media, trained on on all that information out there, is there a future for organisations like public broadcasters? 
Ooh, uh, there's uh, there's a there's a whole other piece scenario piece there. So so at the moment, um, the vast majority of us will go off and go to Google, and we will go and do our Google searches. We've been trained and um, articles, whatever, etc., will pop up, and I will go and click on them and then follow my train of thought. The in the very near future, that is all going to be LLM based. I'm going to mm -hmm. ask the LLM. Hey, I'm interested in this. Could you tell me something about that based on recent articles that have been published? So um, the the publishers, um, those who are already out there in public broadcast, will release their information because they're mm -hmm. paid for by the government. That will be easily accessible to the LLM, whereas the paid publishers are, A, going to be constrained because the LLM's sucking out whatever they've gone. The secondary part, though, is where do they get their advertising money from if the LLM is doing all the work and all the interaction, you might eventually get to a page, but secondary piece is just ask the LLM to summarize the article. Don't show me any adverts. So there's, I think there's, there's a big shift coming in how the traditional, so traditional modern media of mm -hmm. here is a page, here are adverts up and down around, and this is how you engage to those LLMs that are going to be um, basically pushing all of those pieces away. And, and a, a, as big a change as we had when we started using Google, that it's going to spin the other way. Um, I've started thinking about what might happen in those. I suspect what is going to happen is that the LLMs are going to start being crowded with adverts, but mm -hmm. it's going to be aligned with the publisher that they provided the information to. So there's going to be a, an appropriate level of sharing of the hey by me drawing an article and summarizing it, I'm still going to pay you a small amount or I'll pay you a portion of the advertising that I get back off it. But it's, look, it's who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of years on that basis? If I remember correctly, Australia has a rule in place around Google paying for news media. Um, yes. We're, we're having that conversation here. Does that mm. impact... First of all, does that actually impact what people see? Has that had an impact on how people interact with the media? Um, I I must admit I haven't looked. Um, the I think you know the the it was the right it was the right way. It, you know that that piece in terms of um, yeah you know that Google was taking an increasing amount of of, of ad revenue from the publishers. Um, you can take the separate thing of publishers bringing bringing the quality down, paying for you know, hey, it's clickbait, it gets me the money. But yeah, if you know, if journalists are getting paid less and less for creating content, um, and the at the um, the search engines of the world are also not paying for that content, we we've, we've got a good race to the bottom there. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can only generate it via AI. <laughs> Um, rather than some good independent journalism, um, that it, yeah, it is totally a race to the bottom. So I think yeah, something will change. So that bit in the publishers recognizing, acknowledging that content was going away and advertising dollars were going away, put the LLM search on top of that, and it's not going to be Google that are going to be um, mm. thing. It'll be Open AIs and Claude. They're going to be going. Hey, you've been taking my data. We need some level of sharing. We need some level of appropriate uh, revenue sharing off the back of that. Is there going to be a point where an LLM can say, look, this is the best model that we should be using for media because this is this way we all get paid and you're not human, so you yeah. could never come up with it yourself. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and and the um, you and I as an individual to go and say to the LLM, I want both sides of the picture, please. I don't want you to follow my echo chamber, my bias. I want you mm -hmm. to throw in articles that are really anti anti my um, my sense of um, uh, of what the world is like. Uh, that would be an amazing thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to get I, I think it's a really that. important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, still, um, uh, there's got to be somebody's got to pay for the building of that. Somebody's got to pay for the running of that, yeah, you know, the the cost for running LLMs is, I think, against Google, it's between twenty and two hundred times more expensive to run an LLM query than it is to write a go to run a Google query. So okay. something's got to come up that's going to pay for that. Yeah, 
that that's actually really kind of scary thinking about it. I didn't realize it was that much of a disparity in the amount. And I know the power drawer, is, it, like the energy drawer is also yeah, kind of correlated. And it, that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. That you're going to yeah. use computing power. So you've got to have the computers. You've got to have the electricity to power these computers. Yeah. Yeah. Because is it was it OpenAI that's just bought a couple of nuclear power plants? <laughs> yep, trying to trying to um, help them grow uh, with something that is um, slightly better than running coal, if it, depending on who you ask. In the in, well, we're, we're very anti-nuclear in this country, so I, I probably yeah. shouldn't comment on whether or not it's. A, we'll <laughs> never have a nuclear power plant here. That's another, that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that that's one that this country will. will die on a hill over i think it, it's very very contentious um in, in terms of entertainment media do you think what, what, what do you think the future of llms are there because well, there was the writers and actors strike that we saw last year and one of the most contentious issues that was cropping up there was artificial intelligence writing and ai characters being brought in or ai likenesses of dead actors um yeah. Do you think it will have much of an impact going forward, or do you think it, it's deliberately being held down at the moment by the people who will be impacted by it? Um, I think deliberately and appropriately. Um, you know, the uh, the use of somebody's voice that within with fifteen seconds of um, voice recording, um, we can now emulate somebody's voice, um, and you can have somebody talking, somebody generally talking in the style or just throwing it through. And that's just going to get better and better. And yeah, the deep fake images and the creation of content through AI is just going to get better and better and better. There's some part of that of creating it that that just will come. You know, the, no, no, this has to be 100% human. Well, mm -hmm. CGI broke that 20 years ago. <laughs> We've got CGI figures that are doing part of it. Um, but I think the... Um, possibly the backlash is going to come in in um at some point in no no i do want unique content i don't want the the 80 877th movie in the mcu to come out and because it's been um factored in of oh yeah this number of people will watch it and enjoy it and there and we're going to leave them hanging and make sure that we have the little exit at the end of the credits something something will change in that that the sameness will will actually start impacting people that will watch it. But um, another interesting area, but I, I totally agree with, you know, if there is an artist there, not just in um, in media, but, you know, hey, my unique piece of art back there, yeah. um, which was drawn by a cartoonist using my face, is I could probably go in and ask LLM to do that again now, but it's not authentic. It doesn't feel authentic mm -hmm. um, uh, when it's taking away from people who are, embedded in the art and and just the beauty of uniqueness of creating something from the james image um was was just such a positive it was a gift of my leaving present and it was just such a great thing and if it had been done via an llm i don't think it would have had the same impact on me and i think we apply can apply that to movies um to any art to tv series etc cetera, etc cetera, that we've got to keep the human part of that in there how much of a risk is there of politicians coming under sort of AI recreations causing trouble? We actually had a news story hit the news, I think it was yesterday. 74-year-old um, pensioner scammed out of her life savings because she saw an AI ad with our prime minister saying you should invest it all in crypto. Mm. Yeah. Um, something that I, people, like it's obviously yeah, happened. I, it's obviously <laughs> happened and it will continue to happen. It will get better and better. Um, that thing on the voice recording, there was it was off a sixty minutes piece where um, the um, the security person, the white hat hacker, um, had gone in and um, called the um, assistant of the presenter and, on sixty minutes and got the assistant to hand over her passport number because she'd managed to emulate the voice within five minutes. Um, so that and the deep fakes and the images, um, the Again, there's a level that we can we can do this in terms of that if it's been posted on or in around mm -hmm. Meta, we can do some things of like no, no, this needs to be reinforced that it did actually happen, um, and our intelligence to be able to look at that, understand it, look at the words, and go, is this does this actually feel right? Even to the AI, does it feel right to 
basically put a hold on it until somebody can have a look. But yeah, I think some of that will come through. But but the nefarious side, the you know the um, foreign state bad actors, they're not going to be under those constraints. They are going to try and they're going to naturally from <laughs> being bad actors, they're going to try and do that. So so the genie is out of the bottle. It is going to happen. We and it's going to get better and better. And yeah, we are going to be in the place where what you said, you know, I need to see it with my own two eyes. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, unless you're physically there, we're going to be in a position where that's just, you will not be able to trust what you see. Um, there are levels of things that we can do, but um, it's going to be a gamification. Hey, we put in a, you know, a little DRM digital thing in to go, this was really true. And then somebody's going to be able to emulate the DRM and then we're going to have to think of something else and then do mm-hmm. something else. And it will be a continual game, um, not a great game, but a continual game to to keep ahead of those things. Cool. Last question for you. How can we use a tool like an LLM to help educate people to be more aware of what's happening in their media sphere, uh, to identify bias or to recognize an artificial image, things like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, we can we can definitely go in and ask it. And, and, and the some of those things, back to the AI policy, some of those pieces are, um, that are being deployed are, Hey, here is the LLM or a, you know predictive AI that's done this decision, um, and what we'll have is another parallel AI that's running that's going. Please check this for any level of bias. Um, and so LLMs running sort of as the <laughs> the left and right <laughs> shoulder angel and devil <laughs> part is is going to increase, I believe. Um, okay, so that's going to double the amount of energy that we're going to use. Mm-hmm. But I think this thing of having one LLM that does the thing and then have another LLM to go, do you feel that based on what you see that there's any bias in that response is going to be a, a thing? And it will probably be packaged as a single, here is an LLM that does that. Um, that but yeah, that's that's on the basis of you coming in and going, this is what I want to do. I want, to, I want something that is, that I, I want the truth um rather than i want the product um and mm-hmm. i and i think there's only a certain percentage of the population that will will um want to and want to pay the additional for what is as close to the truth without the bias that's out there fantastic i think that's all my questions and this has been cool. really educational so thank you very much james it's very much appreciated okay. um people can hunt you down online at linkedin yeah. absolutely Brilliant. pragmatician Yep. Excellent. I'll make sure that there's a link for that in the description. All right. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. See you again. Hey, thanks for checking out this week's episode of the Data Radio Show. I want to thank James again for joining me. I always enjoy sitting down and having a bit of a chat with him. And if you want to find that research piece, I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description below. Again, don't forget if you haven't already to hit that like button or share the video or podcast, depending on where it is that you're getting the content from. Until next time, make sure you live long and prosper. May the force be with you.